In this video, we're going to be going over eight fire behavior terms as well as the different class sizes of wildland fire. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ronnie Ocampo. This is the second video in the Fire Basics series. You can watch the first one right up here on the parts of a fire. The first thing we're going to talk about is spread, and that's just the movement of the fire. So you calculate rate of spread in chains per hour, and one chain equals 66 feet. So I'm going to go ahead and leave an example right here so you guys can do the math on it. I'm not the greatest at this, but I'll try to explain it the best that I can. A good rule of thumb is to watch the fire for one minute and see how far it goes because there are 60 minutes in an hour and you're doing chains per hour, right? So you watch it for one minute and there's about 60 feet in a chain. This is a rough estimate, like we said. So you're gonna watch it for one minute, see how many chains it goes, is your rate of spread. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is smoldering. So this is when there's no flame and it's just like barely spreading. This is where it's down in like duff or moss or mulch. It's kind of just punking around as you can see here we're going to look at is creeping. So it does have a low flame length and it moves rather slowly as well. An example that I have is the 2013 Black Forest Fire here in Colorado. So it wasn't the main flame front that destroyed these beautiful million dollar homes. It was these two, the smoldering and the creeping fire. So while they do not seem very intimidating, they can cause a lot of damage. The next thing we're going to look at is a running fire. So this is where there's a well-established head and it spreads very quickly, typically due to either being wind driven or fuels driven. The backing fire is when the fire is moving away from the head of the fire or it's going downhill or against the wind as you can see in this picture here. The next thing we're going to talk about is spotting. This is basically where sparks or embers from the main fire get carried by wind or the convection column to start their own fire. And as you can see here, there's different categories of spotting. So you have your short range versus your long range. And short range spotting isn't really that big of a deal because typically the fire will overrun that, so it's not a big deal. However, you wanna be careful of the long range because it has potential to grow the fire exponentially. So you have to be careful for the long range spotting. The next term that we're gonna to touch on is torching. So this is where a single tree or a small group of trees or shrubs torches out. So the whole tree will be engulfed in flames all the way up to the crown. However, that's not a crown fire. If there's spacing around and it's just that one single tree or that small group of trees that start, sets on fire, it's not a crown fire. A crown fire is different than torching in that the fire runs through the tops of the trees at a high rate of spread and it's very intense and it's a continuous stand of trees and it can be more or less independent from the surface level fire. So you can have a surface level fire and if it gets all the way up in the crown and just takes off, you can have a crown fire go for miles and miles, spreads very rapidly, very intense, and be completely separate than a surface level fire that's down over here that's trying to catch up to that fire. So the last thing we're gonna talk about is blow up. So if you've ever watched a time lapse of a fire, um, sometimes you can see the inversion lift and you'll just see the intensity of the fire and the spread rate go really quickly. So this is a blow up. Sometimes you can expect a fire to blow up at a certain time, say two o'clock, the inversion lifts. We expect to see an increase in fire behavior, but sometimes you get a blow up that's unexpected. And this is just a term that describes the upset of suppression plans that are in place. And then the last thing we're gonna to touch on is the different class sizes of wildland fires. So as you can see, they range from A to G, and it's good to note that they are measured in acres. I got this information from the S-130 training from the National Wildfire Coordinating Group. I'll have them linked down in the description. Please give this video a thumbs up if you got value from it and you want me to continue doing these fire basic type videos to get you prepared for your fire season. And if so, please subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.